and one. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages, welcome to another episode of Fulton Street Beats, where we like to give you a lot of information on a lot of different products and a lot of different cheap and inexpensive ways to set up a little home studio and not break the bank if you're just starting out. Okay, we got something special in store for you today. For those of you who are looking for inexpensive, as a lot of you are, home studio equipment. Don't be embarrassed to use inexpensive or, yes, even cheap things. For instance, look at this BM800 microphone. Now, no, I'm sorry, NW800. BM800 is right here. And don't be afraid of that one either. This one requires a little more effort to speak into, but it does sound good. The NW800 has been compared to, yes, a microphone. We've been over it. That is $12,500, and it was indistinguishable in a lot of tests. So it proves itself right out of the box, and it's $1,899. So we'll just get that right out of the way. If you want to look back at some other videos on that, you can look back and uh, see that. But today we're discussing what works together and will get you by in your home studio that's inexpensive, where you don't have to worry about it sounding horrible. I have recommendations. No, I have not tried everything that's out there, but I like to experiment and try everything, and I stick with what works. We started out with a V8 sound card, and it works, and it works well, and it sounds good. It has its downfalls. Number one, it's small. It's too light, and it slides around. And number two, when you hit some of the buttons, someone speaks to you in Chinese and it gets broadcasted. So that's a downfall, a little bit of a downfall for me. Now, the second one that we tried was the Musin. And actually, I don't even think I tried that yet. Maybe we'll do that live sometime so you guys can get an idea. Now, this is the sound card over here. It's on my studio monitor. It's small. It looks really good. It's visually pleasing. But... It's almost impossible to use because you can't read the writing on it because it's, well, a white on a really light gray and you can't read what it does. Also, it lacks a few options on the back as far as hookups go and it makes it really hard for me to use for my YouTube videos. Then we go to the M9. This is the M9 and look at this thing. It does look professional for sure. I think it produces pretty good sound, especially for a podcast or a YouTube channel. Is it professional? No. It's 25 bucks. But it's got a lot of hookups that we need. The thing that would make this really perfect is if it had an actual XLR in the back and it wasn't. These are XLR mics, but they're down converted to 3.5 aux. Man, would I like this sound card with the XLR input on the back. Two of them. And by the way, you can run three mics with this. You can run two XL or um, two um, condenser mics and a dynamic mic, if you wish. And it has all kinds of effects, as Primal Sound Recording Studio Karaoke, which we're in right now, and I'm in the wrong one. And now we are on Recording Studio, and I hope that sounds better. <laughs> Sometimes I get going on these things, and they're not the right one. That was karaoke sound, and as you can hear, my voice just cleaned up quite a bit. But it has a lot of special effects, and we've been over there those before too. So M9 sound card is what I am going to demonstrate today with the various other things and how they work with each other. How does the MW800 work with these Amazon Basics bookshelf speakers that are dubbed as studio monitors? Why are you using those, Mike? What is wrong with you? Are you stupid? No, I am not stupid. What I am is efficient, and I search for what works, and if it works, I stick with it. If it doesn't work, well, we go to something else. I wasn't going to buy these things, but my JBL MK3s went up, and they're very expensive, and I needed a set of monitors, and at the time when I glanced through Amazon, these things were 50 bucks, long story short. Now they're incredibly, they've, they've, they've risen dramatically to around the $140 mark. 
and why that's not still a lot of money for good monitors with a five and a quarter inch driver and a one inch tweeter and a frequency response that simply will amaze. They produce a flat, flat sound that's detailed, perfect for a studio monitor, but they do lack connections in the back. But I'm digressing. Hold on. So at the time I bought these for 50 bucks, that's cheap. So let's see, we have $50 and then we have 25. So we're $75 in with speakers and a a interface. But wait, what else do we need, Mike, for this? Well, of course, I hope you already all have a computer. Even though mine's not the greatest. Mine is actually a Chromebook and I do not suggest a Chromebook because they're very limited. But what I did do was start out With this BM-800 in a kit that came with the M9 sound card, which you can use, definitely. You don't have to have the... this The M9 is more expensive than the V8 sound card. Only by six, seven bucks, though. So think about that. Well, then I had to have this Musen, because it's so beautiful, microphone here. It's stout. It's beautiful. It's a great sounding mic. So I got a complete package again with that, with the boom arm and this... And, and the BM-800 came with the boom arm and all the cables and everything. So basically, I have everything that I need, but I was searching for a mic. I, mean, I saw a video on the NW-800, and I couldn't believe it when they compared it to a $12,500 microphone, and it equaled that microphone and many tests. So I bought it at the whooping high Amazon price of $18.99. That's right. So what happens when we take this? We're going to do this today. I'm going to leave the BM-800 out of the equation simply because I don't think that the the BM-800 is on the bottom of this list, although it does work very well for podcasts. We're going to leave this on the bottom of the list. We're going to leave this out today because what we're going to do today is really not what it's designed to do where they claim these other ones are, and that's for reproduction. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take these $50 monitors that I'm using for monitor speakers, and we're gonna, just going to play some... Remember, this is low budget. I'm not going to use a high-end amp, nothing. We're going to run this. My source is going to be my computer, my Chromebook. And I'm going to play some audio sources through these speakers. Okay, some audio. I think a 24-bit, although it's YouTube. We're going to place this NW800 in front of this speaker, and then we're going to place this Musen, and I always forget the model, so bear with me. It is a MS2H, the 2H. And we're going to place this in front of the right monitor. We're going to keep... Everything set where it is right here on the board. I'm not so keep in mind, I'm not gonna fiddle with anything. We're gonna hit play, and I'm gonna let you guys hear a direct line of each of these speakers into this M9 sound card, which it's not designed to do on it. But no matter what they say, this is this is designed for what we're doing right now. But let's see if it's acceptable. Because I believe it is acceptable. And let's see where the weak link is between all of these. Because personally, I think the weak link is the M9. I think with a bit better of professional audio interface, it would sound a lot better. But for what I'm doing, this is perfect. And remember, cheap. So let's total up everything before. Well, let's do that after. Let's get to it. Let's play this music through these mics, through these studio monitors, through the M9. So you out there can put on your headphones, hopefully, and get an idea of what's being done on the cheap. So let's do that right now. Now, I'm not going to run any pop filters at all just so you know so we're going to run it just like this hoping that i have this acoustically set up
about love talking about love talking about Okay, now we are just working with the musin on the right. Take a listen. Specialist tradition, mama. Let me feast my eyes. Talking about love. Talking about love. Talking about yeah. Factory condition. And now let's use the NW800 and remove the musin. And now let's go back to both. Talking about Okay, so as you can see, as you can see, one microphone really works really well through the M9, and they both work really well. They both reproduce the sound pretty well for an inexpensive sound card and a um, an inexpensive sound card and some. And believe me, the weak link is not the speakers because of these things simply will, the detail here will blow you away. But the microphones themselves, I'm going to have to say that the Musin, as far as detail goes, through the M9 sound card. Now that's, that's the clincher right there. This one works extremely well. Now, that's with the, what's with the adjustments not touched. That's not to say that this, NW800 will sound, won't sound better. It's it's a warmer microphone where I believe this Musin picks out a lot of detail. And it really does pick out a lot of detail. And it's really well built. If you've seen the video of me getting inside of this thing in the circuitry, you'll know that it's well built. It's quite heavy, actually. So, what do we have total into this? Well, let's add it up. We have eighteen ninety nine, so nineteen bucks for this NW eight hundred that came with a shock mount and the cable. Then we have this sound card that run me twenty five dollars and came with all connections. And then we have this Musin over here. If you want to add this in, that was fifty five bucks with the, well everything cable XLR. The boom arm pop fil pop filter, which is right here, which works amazingly. And then we have the speakers that I paid fifty bucks for. So do the math. Very inexpensive. And by the way, you get a lot, you have a lot of extra stuff because you got a backup. You'll have a backup uh sound card over here. And you'll have some extra cables and things of that nature. So the point of this is to show you how inexpensively we can do things and have a 
usable result that's not too bad. And we just used it for something that is really not intended for. But it served the purpose. And they're two distinct sounding microphones for sure. Which one is better? I believe the NW800 is a better sounding microphone for the human voice. But I believe that the Musen picks up detail. And it's all going to be in adjustments to what you're doing to your sound card. And I haven't adjusted. Everything's flat on this board right now. It's flat. This is how I do things. It's flat. It's easy to remember. Adjust a flat mic. You don't have to worry about it. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching Fulton Street Beats because, well, it was fun, right? I think it was fun anyhow. Gonna shut down this, uh, shut down these speakers, and hopefully we can get a connection back on our for our Bluetooth for our M9. I'm running everything Bluetooth, by the way. So there you go. There's another thing. Nothing's direct wired. Running Bluetooth. I better, better, I better turn it on. There we go. Bluetooth is should be now on any second. Come on, connecting, waiting, anticipating. There we are. So now's the time to come to bid you adieu. I want to thank all of you for watching Fulton Street Beats. And yes, this is just Bluetooth to the M9 sound card, not using the microphones. Remember to be kind to one another, everybody. It's a crazy world we live in. And I hope to be seeing you soon here on Fulton Street Beats. Thanks a lot.